it's a really that's an important because that's what these systems use is yeah. and, and, and it's what sets them apart because it gives you the ability to ask very specific questions mm -hmm. you know I said if you have a, only a mode or only an acupoint, point you can ask a one or two word question if you combine them together you can ask a whole sentence of questions which gives a much more it's a much richer and information dense question then if you only use one mudra or one hand mode or one acupoint, if you put them together, you've already doubled the possibility. You put several together, you now have a very information-dense question that the body can then answer. The mode. So now we had specific indica an indicator points and we had modes. And for a, uh, a dozen years, that's, all, that's how people use them. They use this one, they use that one. And Richard, in an insight one day, said, what happens if I do a mode and I touch an acupoint, right? Because all of a sudden, I'm now having the frequency of the acupoint interacting with the frequency of the mudra, or the mode, creating an interference pattern that's unique for that combination. And so he worked out the idea that you could use a combination of hand modes and, and acupoints, and the first was just kind of one and one, then he went to one and two, or two and two, very, com you know, very complex formatting, it's evolved from that, but he, he, then he had the idea, acupressure formatting. Well, why would I need that? I need that where it's very complex. What's the most complex structure in your body, the brain? So he did what he did, what's called brain physiology, on the basis of this acupressure formatting. So for certain things, when to cortical, you're going to go to a gland, and you're going to go to organ or anatomy, gland anatomy, and you can come to here, central vessel 24. Well, in the, in the AK found out that this was... Uh, brain, cortex, and that's also in the Chinese system. It's basically more cortical aspects of, of, of function. So then you, have, you now had a, a reliable uh, way of knowing that this was indeed a, 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 a brain organ uh, thing. You could go to organ and, and you had a whole system now that you could identify individual uh, components, but very specifically, in fact, you could identify areas. So you did it as anatomy, you're looking at the anatomy. You looked at it as a physiology mode, you're looking at the physiology of the same place. So it gave you this incredible tool to start investigating the brain. Of course, then he found that sometimes they were multi-component. You couldn't just do it in a mode and, or even two modes and a single acupoint. That gave a context. Once you put the context in circuit, then you could find additional factors about that specific context. So now we're going to this part of the brain. Now I can see what's the anatomy and physiology inside that part of the brain, right? And then I can even go to a part of the brain, a part of the part of the brain, you know, a, a sub-nucleus in that part of the brain. So you had this incredible possibility. Now Richard explored it with, by doing basically uh, the, the limbic system and, and, the, uh, and the cortex in a very general way. Right. But the limbic system, particularly the hypothalamic areas, and he really broke that down and, and, and gave us an, an access to all of these structures that control so much of your physiology. And so uh, then once he taught that, other people started using that. I was one of them because I was developing this link program that has to do learning. Learning is all about the brain. So I was using Richard's original formats. And then, of course, I had, there were places I had no format for, so then I developed some formats. And then I had a, a student in my college named Hugo Tabar, and a, a genius, and truly a genius with this. And he came along, and once he, he called me up one day, and I remember, I remember this, he said, Charles, he said, we, had, we have formatting for you know, all these things, we don't have anything for the brainstem. And the brainstem is really important physiologically. I said, you're right, Hugo. I said, but, I said, I don't have time to research that, but this is what Richard did, right? And then about six months later or something, I get this, uh, you know, he sends me this thing, and I, it's a list of formats that he made for the brainstem and the different major components of the brainstem. And I started using my clinical practice, and it was unbelievable how that changed my practice. And since then, he's gone on to format every part of the human body, every nerve, every nucleus, you know, so it, 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 every muscle, every bone, you know, sure. because they all do have a unique frequency pattern. Every structure has its, that's why it's different than another structure, and the properties of it are different because it's a different structure, right? So that if, if everyone has a unique resonant, you know, interference pattern, and what Richard's idea was, if you could find the match 
for, in mudra and modes, for the, I mean, in, in acupoints, for that particular structure, you would then be able to tell when that structure was in balance and out of balance by muscle feedback. 